Yes, I made a covenant. And I'm ready. I am an agent of change. I see you, church. I made a covenant with God. And I'm ready. To move. On what God said. Yes. And this Sunday allows us 
to keep our word because our senior pastor has been on a outright tangent My goodness. on the word of bond. See, if that series has blessed you, put your hands together, lift your hands, blow your horns and give some thumbs up. And today we're kicking it in high gear. We're on the red carpet. Listen, we on the red carpet this morning, y'all. But can I tell you, you can be on the red carpet wherever you are because your covenant keeping God has made a promise to you to usher you into a new season yes. of your life and not just usher you in, but he's doing it VIP style. Wow. Listen, somebody type right now, I have a reserved seat for it. what the Father has for me. Listen, if you've not liked this or shared this, we want you to do that right now. Tell somebody to join us. In the greatest virtual experience, I'm just going to say on the planet. Period. If you're in the YouTube campus, I need you to hit the share button and put that link on the page. Our Facebook campus, I need you to use the at symbol and just type A and whatever number comes up or letter comes up, they need this just like you. And I need you to share on the app, on the page, wherever you are, make sure people are connected. Listen, family, we want to make sure that you are completely involved in this bond campaign. Have you been blessed weekly by what pastor has been ministering to us? Listen, I done lost all my edges and my eyebrows every week because he has been killing us with the word, but it has been such a blessing to us. Listen, we want you to stay connected. We want to make sure that you are following the church on Instagram, all of our social media platforms. And listen, do you all like our shirts this morning? <laughs> Do you like these custom Look baseball in shirts, their shirts this morning? Listen, if you want to grab one of these shirts, you can do so at the station. And you can go ahead and order those right from the bookstore yes. at our church website. And if you're here, I want you to bombard the tent and make sure you get one of these t-shirts. And if you need to make this commitment, it's not an if, it's a win. And today is the day. I need you to text right now. NB Bond 700 yes. and I want you to 71441 to make your pledges whether it is $70 whether it is 1700 whether it's 7000 and some of you can do it at even 70000 don't let us put a cap on your seven just put yourself in a place where your covenant changes your life and don't forget our children we want our babies to know what it's like to start sowing early do you agree and so have them pull out their piggy banks we want them to sow seven dollars yes. so that they know that they are included in what their community of faith is doing as well. Are y'all ready to go higher it's into time. worship? Oh, I can't hear nobody this morning. Y'all in these cars, oh, I don't Come hear on. no horns. Are you ready to go higher this morning? Glory to God. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, let's do it again, everybody. We're moving together. Say to move.
sins of God are already mine. Can you lift your hands? Come on. Are already mine. Come on, whatever the Lord has for you. It's already yours. It has your name all on it. It's already one. Would you lift up your hand out of your car, on the lawn, on this parking lot? Lift up the hand. Today we lift up our hands. We're mindful of all of our concerns, all of our issues. But today I wanted us to extend our prayers towards, towards our brothers and sisters in Haiti. Amazingly, 15,000 were under the bridge in Texas. Within 72 hours, the government is saying they can't account for where they are. But we know we serve a God who all day, all night, angels are watching over them. I want you to pray for a hedge fence of protection for our brothers and sisters who are in need of food, in need of shelter, need of aid, in need of health. I pray not just for them, but I'm praying even now for one million Americans who last night slept in their car. I'm praying right now for the missing teenage black girls who are unaccounted for, who you can't find on any news reports, no pictures in the post office. We pray right now for all of our veterans who are not getting assistance. We're praying right now for those who have been purged from welfare roles who are doing what they can to support and to sustain their families. We're praying right now for those who are overwhelmed with stress and anxiety because of a pending legal issue. We're praying right now for those who are in fear of their lives because they are subject to domestic violence. We pray right now for those who are contending with emotional brokenness. We're praying, why? Because we serve a prayer answering God. We know that our God is ear is not heavy that he cannot hear and his arm is not short that he cannot save. And every person today who knows for yourself that God has answered prayers and this is a week that your prayer is going to be answered. Would you give God glory and thanksgiving for it? Come on, I can't hear you. Clap your hands like you know God is going to answer your prayer. Like you know God is going to meet the need. Like God is going to exceed the expectation. Come on, clap your hands, oh you people. Serve the Lord with gladness. For he alone is worthy. I need you to do me a favor, please. I want you to share. I want you to text somebody, tag somebody, call somebody. Tell them new birth is in the parking lot. But you can watch him right there in your living room, in your dining room, even in your car. Something amazing is going to happen today. At New Birth, I want you to join me in a chorus of thanksgiving for how God has kept you this week. As God has blessed you this week, would you clap your hands even now? Uh, joining us today is uh, the NAACP. Uh, because Atlanta in particular, we are in the, the midst of voting. And because we're in the midst of voting, we want you to know that absentee ballots are beginning uh, to start. I, I'm grateful that uh, New Birth, we raise leaders. Maybe y'all didn't hear what I just said. New Birth, we raise leaders. I better say it so y'all can hear me. I said, New Birth, we raise leaders. And I want to thank God that two of our members have offered themselves for public service. I need your prayers. I need your support. And I need your push behind Dr. Barbara Hall, who's running for the 5th District in Stonecrest. Come on, would you give God some praise for her? Representing the 3rd District is Sister Alicia Washington. Come on, let's give God some praise for both of them. 
I need you to cover them in your prayers and in your support. Those of you that know people in Stonecrest, I need you to push people in their direction as they are moving. How many of y'all are ready to go back in the sanctuary? How many of you are ready to go back? Y'all don't sound like it. I said, how many of you are ready to go back in the sanctuary? It's easy to do. We can go back in the sanctuary if we just get your neighbors vaccinated. <laughs> as soon as we can get your cousins and them vaccinated, uh, we can get that taken care of. Uh, today, friends, uh, we are offering free vaccinations uh, in our Family Life Center. I uh, ask that immediately after service uh, that you would make your way down the hill uh, and go into our Bell Center so that you can get vaccinated. Call and text uh, people who are connected to you uh, and let them know we want to go to church and you holding up our service. All you got to do is go and get vaccinated on uh, today. Uh, would you help me thank God that uh, worshiping with us is praise 102.5. Come on. Praise 102.5 has been hanging out uh, with us all day today and they've been getting the word out for all of us. I I'm telling you, I've been all over the world and there is not a worship experience, not a worship encounter like new birth. How many of you all believe that? I must be talking to strangers. <laughs> the reason why it is that uh, I am appreciative about new birth is not just what we do in church on Sundays, but how it is that we serve the community Monday through Saturday. Uh, yesterday, as was our tradition and culture, uh, we opened up our doors and thousands of families who were contending with food insecurity, came onto our campus and was able to get groceries to sustain their family for the week. Somebody give God a praise for that. I'm appreciative uh, not only for yesterday, but in the pandemic, New Birth, we have fed 750,000 families. Come on, somebody give God glory. Uh, we would be deceiving ourselves if we thought we were the only ones doing the work. I I'm thankful that we've got organizations in this community uh, that are doing heavy lifting. And because uh, this is the month that we focus on community, I, I wanted to share with you uh, five organizations and whom we are proud of and whom it is that we stand with on today. Give God a hand clap of praise for them as they come. And not only are we uh, proud of them, we're sowing into them because at New Birth, we are a giving church. I better say that again. I said, New Birth, we are a giving uh, church. And so today we want to give a blessing to five community organizations uh, so that they'll know that they are not in it by themselves. But there is a church in DeKalb County who is putting their money where their mouth is. I tell you, there is no church that will outgive what New Birth does. And so today, New Birth, I need y'all to honk your horn. I need you to scream. I need you to yell. We're giving $5,000 to Miller Grove Middle School. So, oh, come on, make some more noise than that. $5,000 to Miller Grove uh, Middle School. We're giving $5,000 to the King Center. Come on, give God some praise for them. We're giving $5,000 to the Atlanta Union Mission. Somebody give God glory for them. We're giving another $5,000 to the Teen Parent Connection, helping teenage parents. Come on, and another $5,000 to the African American Association of Georgia. Somebody give God some glory. Now, the reason why I wanted you to see this reason why I want you to see this, we are giving, hear this, while we are still owing. Did y'all hear that? Softly, musicians, I need you to hear this. We are giving while we are still in debt. We are still giving while we have an amazing mortgage. Because we stand on the principle that if you give, it's going to come back to you. How many of you know God loves a cheerful giver? That God will outdo your giving at every turn. And so today, 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25. We're giving out $25,000 while we're in the middle of a campaign. Y'all ain't saying nothing. $25,000 while we're in the middle of trying to lower our own debt. And so I want you to pray for these organizations, these schools, these nonprofits, that they will continuously lift up the light of Christ and do the work of God. A city planted on a hill cannot be hid. And I'm believing that God is not going to allow us to remain anonymous because of the work that we are doing in the body of Christ. Give God a cheer for these partner organizations as they go forth. Thank you so very much for all that you do and for how it is that you let your light shine. At New Birth, yesterday I was uh, with a, a group of uh, entrepreneurs in, uh, in Florida and they had a speaker who absolutely blew my mind. His name is uh, Mr. Brown. I'm gonna be bringing him here uh, soon. He has over $5 billion in assets. He has $5 billion in assets and he was talking to this group of some 400 entrepreneurs and he said something that really just rattled uh, my brain. He said, there is no reason in the world for the lion to be king of the jungle. Said so there's no reason for the lion to be the king of the jungle. Why? Hear this new birth. Because the lion is not the biggest in the jungle. That would be the elephant. Said it is not the fastest in the jungle. That would be the cheetah. Said it would not be the smartest in the jungle. That would be the orangutan. It wouldn't be the wisest in the jungle. That would be the owl. Said the lion is the king of the jungle, hear this, because of mindset. Because he believes he is the king, everybody else falls in alignment with it. Many of you need to change your mind about who you are. But all the more, you got to change your mind about who your God is. How many of you know that my mind is clear? That if God be for me, who can be against me? My mind is clear. Can nobody do me like Jesus? Nobody can do me like the Lord. My mind is clear that I am more than a conqueror. My mind is made up that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So you may not be the smartest. You may not be the richest. In your estimation, you may not be the prettiest, but you have to have the mindset that I am the best that God has to offer in the earth. If you know I'm talking to you, would you clap your hands? Would you honk your horn? It becomes abundantly clear why a lot of people do not tithe, why a lot of people do not sow to church. Because they have the wrong mindset. When it is that I am giving, I've got to have the mind of the kingdom. That I am a lender and not a borrower. i got to have the right mindset that my father is rich in houses and land. i got to have the right mindset that in my father's house are many mansions and there's a room with my name on it. i got to have the right mindset. He will supply all of my needs. Y'all are real Bible church. I wonder who your pastor is. Y'all really know the word of God. I want to challenge you. Those of you who have the right mind towards the serving of God's people. The right mind for the embitterment and the empowerment of our community. The right mind that Jesus is the answer for the world today. I'm going to challenge you, those of you who, like Nehemiah, looked at that wall, but he made up his mind that it's got to be built, it's got to be accomplished, it's got to be challenged, and it's got to be changed. I want every single one of you, please, sir, please, ma'am, I, I want you to begin tithing right now. Your giving options are provided for you on the lower thirds of the screen. Those of you who are here, uh, would you just take out your phone? Let me see your phone, please. Lift up that phone. Lift up that phone. You're giving on, on Givelify. You're giving on Pushpay. You're giving on text to give. I want you to give. God loves a cheerful giver. 
I don't want you to delay in doing it. I need you to do it right now. Don't trust your memory. You ain't going to remember later. I want you to do it right now. Give in accordance to what God has given to you. Because we are a tithing church, what percent of our income goes to God? Come on, because we are a tithing church, what percent of our income goes to God? God is asking only for 10% when it is that Visa wants 17%. MasterCard wants 19%. American Express wants it all at the end of the month. And God is saying, all I've asked for is 10%. And in 2021 years, the rate has not changed with inflation. I want you to give that best gift. I want you to give that best seed. I want you to be mindful that in one month, in one month, August the 24th, October 24th, uh, we're going to raise $700,000 above our tithes and offerings. And new birth, we're going to do it in one day. Y'all don't have that kind of faith. I said, we're going to do it in one day. Seven people are going to sow 7,000. 200 are going to give 1,700. 1,000 of you are going to give 700. 100 of you are going to give 70. I, I need you to make a covenant with God. God, you can trust me. I'm going to do it. I'm faithful over a few things. But God, I know that you're going to make me ruler over many. If you're excited about what God is going to do in the life of your family, in the life of your bloodline, today we ain't talking about generational curses. How many of you all are ready for generational blessings? Y'all don't, y'all don't want a generational blessing with your name on it? I'm excited about what God is going to do and how he is going to move. My sister is here. Darlene, come on, come on, come on. She all the way from Paris, Georgia. Come on. You all know Darlene. Come on, get make some noise for Darlene. Good morning. How y'all doing, New Birth? Man, y'all look good. Y'all look real good out there. Listen, I just want to just say thank you, first of all, from all of us at Praise 1025 for keeping us the number one gospel station in the absolute country. Yay! Thank you. And then I got to say a personal thank you for keeping the nightly spirit the, the top-rated gospel show. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Awesome. Because folks, I thought folks don't listen to gospel at night, but you do, and I say thank you. But how many of y'all love Praise 1025? Let me hear you. Listen, it has, it has been the absolute lifeline for so many people that are just looking for inspiration and looking for hope and looking to be encouraged and looking for, for some direction and for some guidance. So I thank all of you for, for going to Praise 1025 for that right there during the week. And I want to say to y'all that Praise in the Park is going to be next Saturday on October 2nd at the Solaris Amphitheater. And it is the biggest Praise in the Park that we've ever had. Wow. Now, how do you have the biggest one you've ever had in a pandemic? Huh? That has got to be God. Listen, Pastor Mike Jr. is going to be there. We've got C.C. Winans co coming. Israel and New Breed will be there. We've got so many people I have forgotten. <laughs> we got Anthony Brown Ja'Kayla and group there. Ja'Kayla and Carl, of course. Kiara. And here is, here's the thing about Kiara Shear. Kelly, she is recording her live album at Praise in the Park. Wow. wow. Okay. Now, I heard, now don't, now don't quote me on this, I heard she might be bringing her mama and her aunt together. Wow. I, I'm just saying. So I want you all to make sure that you come to Praise in the Park, get your tickets. Please get your tickets. And I'm going to see you there. Erica Campbell is going to see you there. Ja'Kalen Carr is going to see you there. Willie Moe Jr. is going to see you there. But... We're going to see each other and have a great time. So we love you so much. Thank you so much for embracing us. And we'll see y'all next Saturday. Is that all right? Thank Make you for having noise us. noise for praise. Come on, Tiffany Boone. <laughs> hey, everybody. Listen, listen. My best friend is here. Can y'all give a shout out for Pastor Mike Jr.? No, no, no. That was for me. Can, can you get a little bigger? Pastor Mike Jr.? I don't know about you, but I am so excited to celebrate Jesus with him and his team. 
dude has already won five stellar awards. He done been billboard for I don't know how many weeks. So listen, we got to rock hard. Come on down to the front a little closer. If you ain't scared, come on a little closer so we can rock our heart with Pastor Mike Jr. Let's give a shout out, a new birth welcome to Pastor Mike. New birth, you better make some noise if you know God is a good God. I said, make some noise if you know God is a good God. If you favor, tell your neighbor, tell them that we got it, yeah. Whatever you need, trust and believe. I trust and believe. Supremacy. Somebody make some noise if you love God. Let's go. If you bless, go on say. If he can't do any, he always made a way. Sick! 
it's a praise party, ain't it? When you go home and it's a check in the mailbox and wouldn't nobody help you, I want you to look at God and say, I keep good, yeah. Whoa.
ready for the next thing that you're doing in my section. I still believe it's gonna be. Woke up this morning, I'm blessed. Food on my table, I'm blessed. Clothes on my back, yeah, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The devil already know who it is. Devil already know who it is. I don't know what you feel. I don't know what you feel. 
Shout like it's going to be big. We've been in a series called Word is Bond. I want you to go quickly to Matthew 19, Matthew 19, verses 21 and 22. Matthew 19, 
verse 21 and 22. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21 and 22. Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor. And you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away in sorrow because he had great wealth. I want to preach for a little while uh, Today, continuing our series, I want to preach today for richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. Professor Kevin Koss from the University of Minnesota said in a briefing that love may bring two people together, but too many times it's money that drives them apart. Love can bring two people together, but too many times... It's money that drives them apart. Data collected from SunTrust Bank found that money is the lead point of contention for couples and the second leading cause of divorce after infidelity. The truth of the matter is the crux of the conflict is not cash itself, nor is it connected to secret bank accounts or online gambling. It really whittles down to trust. Money can become the real matrix where in marriage the red and blue pill boil down to values and honesty. So the person who I'm involved with, who I'm dating, who I'm marrying, I got to ask them, can I trust you to have delayed gratification so that we can have a secure future. Can I trust that you will not put aesthetics over assets? Can I trust that you have a financial plan and you are not living for Zappos and Amazon? It can become toxic, especially if they come from a family tree that eats all its own fruit or if they are just instinctively selfish. That's why many aren't sure how to behave. Many people don't know how to handle you. They don't know how to respond or to react when they discover that you actually don't love them for their money. We're living in a culture where currency has replaced identity. So people treat you based off of how much they think you are worth. A lot of people are about to lose their minds because they lost their job as if they don't have confidence that God will give them another one. The American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers have reported that divorces, oddly enough, hear this, divorces, oddly enough, pick up in periods during economic growth. The Bible says unless two agree, how can they walk together? I was astonished to discover that there is a higher divorce rate amongst the affluent than there is amongst the destitute. A lot of couples who have a lot coming in also have a whole lot more going out. Frequently, a high-income earner is married to a non-worker. In addition, the higher-income spouse can uh, find themselves with inflated time away from the home because of travel, or occupational demands. By an almost two to one margin, the lawyers who were polled saw a decline in divorces during economic downturns, which means that when things got tight, marital bonds got deeper. When things were going well, it was easier for people to leave. 
That underscores, therefore, why in the marital vows it says richer before it says poorer. Because your greater temptation is how you will act when you have money. It's actually harder to stick in there when you are richer. Al Green said, let's stay together. Whether good or bad, happy or sad. But you'll notice that Reverend Al never said richer or poorer. I got to ask you a critical question today. Whether you're in the lawn, whether you're on a folding chair, whether you're watching from your home, I got to ask you, how does your economics inform your discipleship? Have you ever thought about why is it there are more churches in the projects than in the suburbs? Psalm 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. But seriously, though, which times do you bless him more? When do you pray more? At what point do you worship more fervently? You asked him to make you richer, but can he trust you when you are poorer? So sometimes to get that old thing back, God has got to make it like it was. Because God discovered in high level observation that you were more faithful when you had less. Can God trust you with more? I hate to rain on your parade. But I got to tell you that sometimes when you lost money, it was not the devil. Sometimes when you were going through financial hardships, it was not the enemy and it was not a curse. Sometimes you went through financial trial because God needed you to pray more. God needed you to worship more. God needed you to be more faithful because he saw when you got money, you started going to brunch. When you got money, you started playing golf. When you got money, you started spending more time online shopping. So God said, I need to see how will you trust me when you got less. The Bureau of Labor Statistics latest survey of consumer expenditure found that the poorest fifth of American households contribute on average 4.3% of their income to charitable organizations. Whereas the richest fifth gave on average just 2% of their income. We've got data that shows explicitly the broker you are, the better giver you are. It's like rolling up toothpaste. You've got to get the best you can from the bottom. The reality is most people don't know poor people intimately unless they work for them. But God put you in a place in poverty to remind you of who you used to be. He needed to see how would you respond when you see your old self. But it becomes a whole lot more strenuous to give to people, especially when you know them. How, pastor, do I give to my child who has no initiative? How do I give to my friend who is always in crisis? How do I give to my mate who does not know how to manage? And today, I'm not telling you to give to them. What I am saying to you is stick with them the same way God stuck with you. Do you remember how God blessed you when you had no discipline? Do you remember how God supplied all your needs when your priorities were out of order? Do you remember when he showed up when you spent your income on that which was frivolous? In Matthew chapter 19, some church officials rolled up on Jesus and they asked him about divorce. And they asked the master, what are the excusable grounds for divorce? 
that is acceptable in your sight. Verse number nine, Jesus responds, sexual immorality. And then something happens just a few verses later in that same chapter. A young man walks up on Jesus. When he walks up on him, he asks, what must I do to have eternal life? And after Jesus summarizes the Ten Commandments, he extends to him one last test. The last test was, go sell your possessions and give everything to the poor. I want to say this, I don't know whether you're sitting in your car, whether you're standing on the grass, but I need to say this to you, whether you're watching me sitting up in the bed, you needed to know that poverty was your last test. That God needed to see how would you serve him when your hours got cut. He needed to see what would you do when you had to live out of your savings account. He needed to see what you would respond with when you depleted your 401k. And if you can hear my voice, you ought to be shouting, why? Because God sent me to tell you, you passed the poverty test. You ought to be giving God glory because when you didn't have money, you didn't become mean. You didn't commit suicide. You didn't lose your mind. But you said, I will trust God even when I don't have finance. The only reason you ought to be shouting this morning is in the pandemic, you discovered that favor was better than money. That God has never left me or forsaken me. Don't worry about these folk looking at you crazy. They don't know the days you had to drive with no gas in the car. They don't know how it was when you were scared to open the mail. They don't know how your nerves were wrecked when you didn't know whether the debit card would go through. But you're able to say through it all. I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. The problem is, this young man heard what Jesus said. Sell all you have and give to the poor. And the Bible then exposes his emotion. That he went away sad and then gave us the reason why. Because he had a lot. And I'm not exactly sure why the young man went away sad. And I'm not sure whether you know why. Perhaps it was because he couldn't honor the vow being rich. And he didn't know how to trust God being poor. You didn't hear what I just said. He didn't know how to honor his vow being rich. And he didn't know how to trust God being poor. What part of it bothered him the most? Was it the selling or was it the giving? (laughs) See, Jesus is talking to a businessman. And the businessman knew that when I sell it, I'm going to get a profit for it. That it's going to be more for me in value in the sale than in the purchase. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to entrepreneurs right now. God said whatever you sell is going to be taken care of. Whatever investment you have for your idea, for your concept, for your business, for your LLC, for your book. He said you ought to take delight. Because whatever you sell it, it's going to sell. What was his problem? Was it selling it? But knowing after he sold it with a profit, that he would have to give it away. And I want to argue to you this morning that a lot of you have soul ties that are not sexual. A lot of you have soul ties to things that are tangible. That you don't know how to give stuff away. You got a closet full of clothes you can't fit and you ain't ever going to be that size again. 
but you're so connected to it that you don't know how to give it away. You've got so much that it's hard for you to decide which thing to move on because you don't know how to give it away. Hoarders will never be receivers. Uh, you, you just missed what I just said. Hoarders will never be receivers. And God is saying, I understand how it is that the young man was antsy. How do I give it away when I paid for it? How do I give it away to somebody who doesn't know my sacrifice? How do I give it away to somebody who does not have my work ethic? And God is telling me to give it away. If it was free, I could understand it. But how did you give it away when I paid for it? And those of you who are shaking your head, those of you who are saying you can identify, those of you who say that is a hard thesis for you to argue today, I want to say that's how God looked at you last night. How did you give your body away when I paid for it? You've been bought with a price. Don't you know your body is a temple, holy and acceptable under God, but you keep giving it away to people who don't understand covenant. He had a problem and he walked away. Why? Because he didn't have confidence that he would get it back. What's mine is yours. And what's yours is mine until it isn't. In kindergarten, you learn that caring is sharing. But you forgot that principle by the time you got to seventh grade. You don't ever need to be on a team with somebody who is only with you when you win. You don't need anybody on your team who doesn't know how to stand with you in defeat. I better say this to somebody. Cheerleaders are only needed when the team is losing. If you don't know how to affirm and push and support who you are with, they are not supposed to be on your team. But I need you to do me a favor for whoever you're standing beside today. Would you cheer for them like you believe they're going to win? Come on. Would you cheer for them like the last quarter of the year? God is going to give them the desires of their heart. Cheer for them. That even though they've been tackled, they still going to have a touchdown. Cheer for them. Come. You got to make sure they'll cheer for you when it looks like you ain't winning. That they'll cheer for you when it looks like your back is up against the wall. That they'll cheer for you even when the odds are stacked up against you. Holly, back in 2013, I, uh, I went to uh, the Miami Heat uh, championship game against the San Antonio Spurs. I go to the championship game and um, it's looking pretty bleak because the clock is, is winding down. Clock is winding down and I need you to understand that the San Antonio Spurs have a five-point lead. Um, they got a five-point lead uh, against the Miami Heat. And uh, I, I said, you know what? This, this uh, arena is packed to capacity. Let me get out of here before it's a traffic jam in the parking lot. I got my stuff because there's only five minutes left in the game. And they down by five points. I walk out of that arena. When I start walking out, I don't know because I'm anointed for leadership. People just start walking out behind me. And it's just, it's hundreds just walking out behind me. And we're walking out of the arena and uh, I get maybe a half block away from the arena and I start hearing the sound of cheers. 
I couldn't see because there were no screens out there but I heard a sound and the sound indicated to me that the game had changed that there is something about the sound of a worshiper when they are down that even when you don't know what's happening even when you can't sense it you believe something is about to shift I don't know how you feel about it but I believe between now and December everything in your life is about to change everything in your economy is about to change everything in your bank account is about to change I heard the sound of everybody cheering and me and all those that left early ran back to the arena y'all ain't saying nothing to me we ran back to the arena because we had no idea God helped me that uh, that LeBron had just hit three three pointers in a row and security told us something that messed me up that I didn't think about till I started writing this sermon they said everybody who left cannot come back in I want to say to five of y'all that don't mind shouting whoever left you when you were broke whoever left you when you didn't have your money whoever left you when they didn't think you were going to survive lock the door they cannot come back in I have paid the ticket but I couldn't come back in God help me because I left when I thought they were losing I had to stay outside and watch on somebody's phone to see even though they were down they came back up and they passed the enemy that was ahead of them this is a word for 50 people that don't mind shouting God said if you give me glory today all your money is coming back he said if you praise me everything that the canker worm store is coming back to you he said if you lift me up it's going to be pressed down shaking together and running over would you look at your neighbor and say neighbor look at me this is the brokest I'm ever going to be in my life but beginning today God's going to give it back to me if you need God to give it to you give God a shout like you know it's coming back every dime that is owed every dollar that is owed every check that is owed God said because you are faithful I'm giving it to you I gotta show you this I gotta show this I need you to lift that hand the Bible says whatever you give to the poor you are loaning to the Lord he didn't say give it to your friends your fraternity brothers your sorority sisters say give it to people who can't pay you back and watch and see if I will take care of you the pandemic has been hellified on your money but how many of you believe something is getting ready to change we're not asking God for something tangible but I need enough to sustain my family and to take care of my children and to take care of my grandchildren. I need you to lift up that hand by faith like you believe is coming back. I need you to open up your mouth like you are convinced you gonna get everything that you squalor, everything that went in the wind. God said, watch me restore it back to you. I pray over every lifted hand that you will not have to chase down one dime. Every asset, every piece of property, every contract, everything, hear this, your former job owes you. God, I can't hear nobody in here. 
everything that was promised you that did not come to pass everything that was rightfully yours that you shouldn't have to fight over God said I am going to release it to you in the last quarter of this year and those of you who are standing in need of a financial breakthrough would you give God your best shout of expectation hey I said give God give God I can't hear nobody give God your best shout of expectation God you were with me when I was poor you was with me when I had nothing you were with me when the lights were cut off you were with me when I had to apologize to my own children you were with me he could trust you in poor can God trust you when he makes you rich I'm going to challenge every person every person who has lived through a financially strapped season more than once wave that hand at me every person who knows for yourself it ain't no slogan but I know God as Jehovah Jireh God, I can't hear nobody. I just, every person that can stand on the testimony, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. I'm asking God to bless you exponentially. I know that you've already tithed, but my grandmother, my late grandmother, Paul Lee, Pauline Lucas Williams, said you'll never go broke helping the poor. You'll never go broke helping the poor. I'm going to challenge every person right now to sow a seed. Here it is. And I want you to sow a seed in accordance to your remembrance of your broke season. Of your strap season. Those of y'all from the hood, let me hold something till next Tuesday. <laughs> y'all ain't never had one of those. Let me, let me just hold a little piece of something. Till next Friday, I... I got you when I get paid. Y'all ain't got no real cousins. I can't hear nobody. I'm going to challenge every person who can. Every person who will. I want you to get your best seed as close to 35 as you can. As close to 35 as you can. I want you to do it on push pay, on Zelle, on text to give. I want you to mail it if you have to. But I want you to give a seed. God, I remember having to eat wish sandwiches. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I, I remember having to do my own hair and burning my neck with the curler. I, I can't hear nobody. I, I remember having to paint my own nails and having to put a towel underneath of it. I, I remember having to make Kool-Aid and whipping the sugar down at the bottom. I remember having to bake peanut butter and jelly and cutting the edges off. Y'all don't, don't remember that. I want you to give at that level. Those of you who are not saved, I need you to know the greatest gift you can give God is not your money. The greatest offering you can give God is yourself. If you're here and you're not saved, over to God, you're here and you're saying, I don't have a church home that will cheer for me when I'm losing. I don't have a church that will stick with me when I got my back up against the wall. I'm telling you, new birth is your arena. This is where God wants to prosper you. This is where he wants to flourish you. This is where he wants to develop you. And this is where he wants to make you at your highest level. You have walked God poor. I can't wait to see you run with God rich. How many of y'all know I'm talking to you right now? I'm talking to you. I'm believing that God is going to do it. Uh, Mike McClaw is coming back. Come on, y'all. Mike McClaw's coming back. Uh, but real quick, before he comes, I I'm so glad my uh, sister is here. Michelle Williams, where y'all? Come on, come on, real quick. Come here, come here. I know it, just come, just come. I'm so glad to have uh, Michelle Michelle Williams from Destiny's Child with us. Real quick, real quick, while they setting up, you got a book out. Tell them the name of the book. I'm trying to help. Oh, thank you so much, y'all. Um, Pastor Jamal Bryant, I love you so much. Um, yes, I do have a new book called Checking In about how getting real about depression saved my life and how it can save yours too. It's a topic we don't talk about much um, in church, but one day I'll have to come back and we'll talk about it. Thank you so much. Checkinginbook.com. 
Mike McClaw is going to be medium. Come on. Y'all make some noise for Mike McClaw. Hey, New Birth. It's time for our video announcements. New Birth, are you ready to become an agent of change? To prepare for our Bond 700 giving campaign on Sunday, October 24th, take these seven steps today. Step one, pray about your commitment level. $7,000, $1,700, $700, or $70, or your best bond seed ending in seven. Step two, make your commitment. Text NB Bond 700 to 71441 or visit wearenewbirth.org forward slash bond 700. Step three, join our Bond 700 seven minute prayer call every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Dial in using the number below. Step four, join us weekly as Dr. Bryant ministers his new series, Word is Bond. Step five, begin fulfilling your commitment at wearenewbirth.org forward slash give and select Bond 700 giving campaign. Step six, pray daily about your covenant with God and others. Step seven, be of service to God and others. Through your sacrificial giving, we can change lives, we can change communities, and we can change the world. Coming soon, Bond 700 merch will be available at our Call to Cocker bookstore. Also, pick up a copy of the Book of the Month, Tribes by Seth Godin. Also, please join the Book of the Month online virtual meeting on Tuesday, September 28th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please visit wearenewbirth.org for more information. Emerging Generations and the Exceptional Kids Ministry is hosting its first online summit for parents with special needs children on Saturday, October 2nd at 11 a.m. Guest speakers include Lisa Sims, Dina Kane, Teresa Wright, and more. Learn about the resources available to you. Register to attend using the link below. Join us online on Sunday, October 10th, as we worship in pink attire in recognition of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Our worship service is in celebration of breast cancer survivors and dedicated to support early detection of breast cancer through screenings for men and women. Our Discovering Intimacy Kingdom Relationships class is a new, powerful, life-affirming class that is designed for everyone. Learn how to relate with one another and understand your God-given need for intimacy. Classes will begin on Sunday, October 3rd from noon to 1 p.m. The Discovering Intimacy book is now available in our Call to Conquer bookstore. Please visit wearenewbirth.org backslash events for more information. New Birth is hosting Bishop Neil Ellis and the Global United Fellowship Gathering Virtual Conference October 13th through the 15th. Guest speakers include our pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, Bishop Ellis, Bishop Sean Bell, and many more. Get your tickets today. Register using the link below. And that's going to do it for today's video announcements.